Well, students, we have talked of the different uh, active passive implements. Now, we will talk of another machine which is economizing on the uh, use of irrigation water. It is very essential because uh, so far the farmers have been using irrigation water by flooding the field or check basin. There are various ways and methods by which they irrigate the field. But then they, it has been found that at many locations the amount of water which goes into the field is much more than what actually is required. Many places you will find that the pool of water is more, somewhere it is less and so on and so forth. That way the locations where lot of water is ponding those locations the seed germination will not uh, take place or even there is a germination it will be very poor and the field crop will not be that healthy as expected. So, very recently um, uh, well uh, if I say about last 7 8 years this laser guided land leveler is an equipment which has been used very extensively by the farmers. Well, many farmers are not in a position to own this equipment because this is only meant for leveling the land. But then some of the, the this has been used on custom hiring basis uh, by the farmers in a very, very big way because of the advantages that it will give. So, we will discuss about this laser guided land leveler uh, in this class today. What is a laser guided land leveler? Well, we see that when we want uh, to know the topography of a particular field we have the civil engineering methods by which we do, uh, we use the DMP level and all that and we find out what is the um, elevation and uh, depression of the different locations in the field. If we know that the only way is that we go there and fill up those locations or, co or uh, cover the um, land or cut the soil and make the land as level as possible so that uh, we use water economizing, econom, economized water use and a, the same depth of water could be there in the whole uh, of the field. So, if we know the, uh, the, the topography of this, we would then require the cutting of this um, soil extract from one location to other location and, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, even the scrappers are used, tractor uh, drawn scrappers are there which go in the front and the operator can move the soil and um, level the land. This has been going on. But with the advent of this uh, laser guided land leveler, there are many advantages which has come here. Now, let us see what is laser. Laser you must have learnt in your uh, other electrical engineering classes. Laser is a light amplification by s stimulated emission of radiation, laser. So, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So, this concept is being used for guiding a particular equipment which will know which location it has to cut the soil and which location it has to fill the soil during the course of its action. Well, a laser is a device that emits light through a process of optical amplification based on the stimulated emission of electromagnetic radiation which I explained here. Now, the concept of laser leveler, laser leveling has been around from 1970 although a patent is US patent is given here. It requires high horsepower tractors, yes, this is one uh, big um, important thing apart from the cost. In fact, when it came to the uh, country um, initially, the cost was about 9 to 12 lakh rupees and uh, it was therefore, therefore very difficult to use by uh, small farmers. Then over the years with the government intervention, uh, Ministry of Agriculture and then um, uh, manufacturers were contacted and asked to manufacture this particular equipment at lower cost and hence in the market now you will find even cheaper or uh, within the range of about uh, 3 to 4 uh, lakhs uh, such equipment are available for operation. But then the requirement is slightly higher horsepower. It is a trail type of a scraper bucket, has a trail type of a scraper bucket. These are generally as a trailed equipment, it is used as a trailed equipment. You can also have a mounted implement, but some work is going on which may, we may talk of that later. 
but it is generally a trill type of equipment. It has a laser guided instrument, laser transmitter and receiver. So, these are some of the brief of what the concept of laser leveling is. Now, let us go ahead. What are the different components? What are the of this laser guided land leveler? First is the tractor of course, we have the tractor here. The tractor, the power source, the control unit of this system is kept over here. The receiver is on this mast here. Then the laser beam, laser beam is coming from here receiver uh, and this is the transmitter here, it is on a tripod. Hydraulic cylinder, well there is a hydraulic cylinder, I will talk of this hydraulic system slightly later in this course. But hydraulic cylinder is here which will allow the bucket to be, uh, to be oriented for scrapping and this is the bucket, this is the bucket here which will be employed. So, these are the main components and of course, the connection with the uh, three point linkage of this particular, uh, it is a trail type implement in fact, but there is a connection of the uh, frame uh, which is there uh, with of the tractor. Now, let us go to the other details of this. Types of laser levelers, there are various types in the market as I said that uh, this equipment has been now produced in the market in, in the country, in India and in other uh, countries and there are several uh, types available. According to number of tires, now you see here number of tires, there are only 2, so this is a 2 tire one, there this is a 2 plus 2 4, there are 2 double tires on both sides of this. Then according to type of mast, what is the type of mast here? This type 1 is the power mast, the by um, uh, um, automatically by power we can change the position of this. Then gear mast, the using gear we can uh, change the position of this mast here. Then standard one which is a standard uh, um, mast which has been generally used by all and it is connected through the um, uh, uh, hydraulic system again of this particular equipment. So, these are some of the variations in the level, level levelers which are available. Main purpose of all of them is to do the um, uh, field leveling. Labeling, <coughs> laser land, uh, lab, handling components, detail components which we saw there. The control box, the laser emitter, uh, transmitter, the laser receiver. So, transmitter, receiver and the control box, very important one because one uh, transmits, the other receives and then gets back to the control box which will do the various operations some other safety point of view which are also indicated here because it is a laser beam and it may hurt the person if uh, one is not careful about that. So, those are also indicated here and it is worth mentioning at this point of time. OSA, the OSA Occupational Safety and Health Administration of USA has uh, defined standards. So, qualified and trained operators should be used for operation, this is very important use of anti laser exposure devices, these are very important because when it is in operation, when the people are there, there could be some problem because of these laser. Use of beam shutters or caps, yes it is important, you must have the shutters or caps uh, made when it is not in operation because otherwise it may uh, hurt uh, the mm, human being or the operator. Then avoid the direct contact, yes you should not have any direct contact with this. Use laser warning um, placards, yes, there should be placards or there should be um, uh, locations written properly on that, that uh, avoid looking at this or some other sorts of uh, instructions or warnings which should be given on the equipment. And it should be operated within a maximum operating voltage, output voltage of less than 5 
milliwatt. And these are some of the classes and the power limits which are given here. The basic classifications uh, with respect to the laser uh, classes are given here. So, if between this 220 micro watt to 0.4 micro watt, it is safe. A hazardous if employs optics 1 m. Now, not intrinsically safe if you are using 1 milliwatt. Hazardous if employs optics. Now, these these are some of the terms which need to be looked into from an uh, user's point of view. What we are more interested is that uh, the maximum output voltage must be within this. So, and uh, direct viewing is hazardous, which we should take care of that. Here, uh, a some information about uh, the details of this particular uh, laser land leveling equipment and its important. Uh, points, important components and what are the safety features which one must observe, these are indicated here. How does the laser guided land leveler work? How does it work? Well, as I said that um, uh, generally if common sense says that wherever there is lot of um, uh, soil you try to scrap that and where there is less you try and dump over there. This is a con general concept which we understand or you understand. But then what is the purpose that it does? It, it does not uh, handle so much of soil because we have already taken the topography and that topography is already there in the system. And now the tractor and grading implement the laser, the laser guided systems can be mounted on tractor, bulldozers, scrappers, road graders and even traces wherever you can, you can uh, put them together. Laser transmitters, what is the job of the transmitter? The transmitter or emitter sends continuous self leveled laser beam uh, signal with 360 degree laser reference up to a command radius of 300 to 400 meters. So, this is this transmitter is doing this job 360 degree uh, within a radius about uh, um, radius about 300 to 400 meters and each uh, and always it is doing that. So, depending on the for auto guidance of the receiving unit. So, since it is 360 degree wherever the implement goes when in the operation during the operation it will always keep on uh, informing this as to um, what is the location of that uh, place and what is the job need to be done at that place. Laser emitter is mounted on a type tripod as I showed earlier and stand placed just outside the field to be laser leveled and high enough to have unobstructed laser beam travel. Very simple because this must be at a slightly higher location and it should be unobstructed uh, position outside the field which is being leveled. So, this um, transmitter must be kept at that location on a tripod. The laser sensor, the well the laser is picked up by one or more receivers that are handheld, rod mounted or equipment mounted receivers. Now, this laser receiver is mounted on the scrapper is a unidirectional, unidirectional 360 degrees receiver that detects the position of the laser reference plane and transmit to the control box mounted on the tractor. As I said earlier that the job of the transmitter, uh, the, um, uh, the laser receiver is that it will be giving it will be receiving this that means the scrapper is a unidirectional 360 degree receiver that detects the position of the laser reference plane. It always detects the position of the refer reference plane with respect to what it comes what comes to it and then that transmits to the control box on mounted on the tractor. So, the job of the control box will then start and it will then instruct the bucket to do the job further. So, this has come to the control box. The control box is also mounted on the tractor and this control box has the main control unit for actuating the double acting uh, hydraulic valve. 
there is a hydraulic system because this whole amount of soil which will be there on the bucket it is not possible to be mechanically. So, that is why hydraulic system has been used a double acting cylinder has been used for this I will also show what is this double acting cylinder and how it actually operates what is I will just lead, uh, tell you about the hydraulic system you might not have learnt about hydraulic system, but something I will tell you here as a brief uh, 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 you can say that uh, compatibility of what I am going to say here. Yes, here is the hydraulic valve assembly here. The valve assembly regulates the flow of tractor hydraulic oil. Now, generally in a hydraulic system what, what is there? In a hydraulic system we had certain components. For example, there will be a location where there is the hydraulic oil. Now, this hydraulic oil is lifted through a pump. So, it is lifted through a pump. Now, this pump then put the oil and then it goes to a particular directional control valve. So, if we have a directional control valve here. So, this is the directional control valve here. Now, these are the um, lines, and here is the load. Load. So, the oil is here, hydraulic oil is kept over here. This hydraulic oil is pumped through a pump here, and this pump is given by another prime mover, which could be an electrical motor or an engine. engine. So, this power prime mover gives power to the pump and then this pump will pressurized oil will go to the directional control valve here. This directional control valve has one which comes through this the other may come to the tank and it goes to the double acting actuator which has been said earlier here. So, the and the load is now pushed or uh, taken back. And this if this is the direction which is talking of extend then this will be retract detection for this particular uh, double action actuator. So, this is the one which has been shown here this is the one which has been shown here. The hydraulic valve assembly now this is connected where it is connected to the drag bucket the leveling bucket can either be 3 point hitch uh, mounted um, or pulled by the tractor's drawer. The bucket dimensions and capacity will vary according to the available power source and the field conditions. This is very important to know how much is the power of the um, tractor that we have taken and what is the uh, total volume that we are likely to handle, what is the topography of the field. Therefore, we must have a look at the dimensions of this bucket or the bucket must be chosen uh, in these uh, taking into consideration these parameters. Generally for a 60 horsepower tractor we get a 2 meter wide and 1 meter deep bucket in most soil types. For most soil types we get for a 60 horsepower tractor about 2 meter wide and 1 meter deep bucket uh, is, is used. Now, today in all the tractor companies and the manufacturers are also thinking of using the electro hydraulic system because the hydraulic system has been in use for a long time and the moment we use a electric, uh, electrical system for operating this electro uh, uh, hydraulic system it becomes electro hydraulic system wherein we can very precisely do the job with the minimum uh, power requirement of the hydraulic system. And uh, with ap apt uh, accuracy to a high level of accuracy. Here it is just shown here that there is a control valve. 
there is a control valve over here. Now, this control valve, see we have the uh, this control valve here, the engine is here, the battery is there and the ECU is this. Now, this control valve gets information, actually where does it get information from the sensor, right. So, from the sensor it will get information, it will go to the, mm, the control valve, the control valve will make so that this is operated and the mm, push uh, rear push buttons and quadrant, this is the quadrant which generally we operate man manually when we are operating. So, this has to be operated through the, the system here which we were initially when we were operating this quadrant, we were getting the changes in these. Now, this is the connected to the three point linkage here to which the implement is connected. So, the control valve which is now a solenoid operated control valve. So, uh, this solenoid valve and the whole system is in the ECU, the um, electronic uh, uh, electronic, electronic uh, um, computing unit uh, or in electronic control unit, uh, electronic control unit ECU sorry, in electronic control unit. So, this electronic control unit and we have the angle sensors which will also talk of the angle, the draft sensor which will talk of the draft and these are now in consonance with this ECU, the control valve will be in a position to operate this ram cylinder which will talk of or which will operate the three point linkage here. These are the some more details of whether it is electrical and electronic signal or a mechanical force joints, hydraulic flow or pressure, these details are given uh, in this particular diagram here in the electro hydraulic hitch system. The system layout, a greater system layout is shown here, you, you can see that the the user interface, the control box, on off switch, up down LED, LED indicator or grade LED indicator, position and draft control lever, receiver, on and off switches, manual override switches, receiver height control. Now, all these are indicated in this figure here. See this is the 3 point H, here the, mm, uh, mm, the transmitter is sending the information to the receiver it go to the ECU, then goes to the valve here and valve is operated by the power from the um, engine and pump here, this battery is for this and the details of the um, quick lift, laser mode, um, quadrant operation, on and off etcetera, mass control etcetera are done by the uh, system. This is the layout of the system which does this operation. What is the effect of this laser, laser guided land leveler? An, an experiment has been done in one of the industries and uh, I have in front of me here which I want to show you the results of what happens. So, before leveling the minimum point was minimum point was this after leveling it has come to this. The maximum point was about 2559 millimeter after leveling it has come to this. Total depth 159, it after leveling it has come to this. Mean value or before leveling in the whole field if you consider it is this much and uh, this much after leveling. So, if you take the standard deviation of all this data with respect to minimum, maximum and total depth, we find that the elevation is 25.29 millimeter which has the standard deviation of this elevations locations is 25.29 and then this comes to 12.313 after leveling. So, virtually you see that because of the laser land leveler there is a tremendous difference in the grade of the field which has been prepared and that will help you in giving uh, in economizing on the use of water which will be actually pumped uh, for this. So, this is the biggest advantage of this and it saves a um, lot of energy, we will see in the next slide what are the 
other benefits of this. The different benefits of laser land leveler. Crop yield, it has been also seen that there is a crop yield, increase in crop yield by 20 percent. Why so? Because if the use of water is judicious, definitely there would not be loss of the field crop at various locations in the field. And hence the growth will be uniform, the flowering will be better and then you will get uh, uh, crop from each and every corner of the land and hence the total yield will definitely increase and it has been found by the experiments and people have done. This is out of the past research that I am quoting this data. So, people have found that about uh, 20 percent increase in crop yield has been found, uh, seen. Field operation increased the area by 5 to 7 percent. Yes. Now, the field operation in, in case since you are in a position to save the energy of the um, uh, tractor, uh, whether it is for plowing or for leveling or for uh, uh, creating the proper soil tilt, you save certain energy and that energy can be utilized. So, in other way you can save that it can increase the area 5 to 7 percent more area can be covered if you have the machine energy saved because of this particular equipment which you have used here. Further weed reduction 40 percent reduction in the labor sure re labor requirement the moment uh, we have any mechanization or any equipment being used we are we say that we do not uh, require that much of human labor. Although we do not say that we displace labor uh, altogether, but definitely we want that the labor requirement should be decreased. Not because we want to displace the labor here, because the labor, uh, labor not available for these uh, operations in the field and particularly the, when there is a peak demand of the tasks, whether it is a uh, field preparation or weeding, harvesting, threshing, whatever is the um, uh, situations, we do not find that in these peak hours we get enough people. So, definitely we are talking of reduction in labor, that means we will not require this and still we will have a better crop uh, yield. It ridden, so, the moment we have a uniform, better field, proper uh, leveling of the field. Um, actually smothering of the unwanted uh, weeds etcetera, then you will find that the crop which comes will have minimum weed in, uh, infestation in this, minimum weed infestation. So, about 40 percent we will have weed reduction, weed growth reduction that will come up. And finally, the water efficiency sure, because water is a scarce commodity. We know that um, if you do not have any idea, you will simply pump and start uh, uh, flooding the um, uh, field. That is not correct because when you want to flood the field, you have no idea and you just keep your watch and say that within 2 hours my field will be filled up and I should switch off the pump and go away. So, what, what you have lost? You have lost the energy for, and you have the electrical energy, the pump, the total water. A time may come when you will not have water. So, we will have to economize on this water and this particular equipment is helping us in saving water to the, uh, uh, to the extent uh, such that the efficiency of water increases about over 30 percent. So, we are saving this water which can be used for some other operations. So, saving the water here will increase the total amount of water globally and then hence you can take up another crop. Now, there are some limitations of this uh, unit are also there, which we must know while every unit has a uh, lot of uh, uh, advantages, there are some disadvantages also which go um, hand in hand and we have to be careful about this. For example, trail type results in slippage and hence more fuel consumption. Yeah, when we talk of uh, the trail type implements, there could be um, slippage because we do not have the control of this equipment with the, uh, with the tractor. Because if it is mounted one, we have a complete control on the equipment and the moment uh, load is high, we can uh, change the position and then go ahead. But when uh, this is a trailed one, we cannot have 
uh, control on this and then many places it will slip and then the total area covered will also come down and therefore, this slip um, will occur and hence more fuel consumption will take place. Separate hydraulic unit and control box, yes it will definitely require because the hydraulic system of the tractor uh, is not designed for taking these outputs because a requirement of this particular bucket is very high. If you are taking a bigger bu bucket, it will handle a very high volume of soil and then if you um, think of the way um, uh, density of the soil, then total weight which is to be um, handled by this bucket is very high. So, you need to have a separate hydraulic system, yes. You can call this to be limitation, but then when you think of the advantages, several advantages, I think this will offset and then we must have a separate system um, as compared to the system which is available for uh, tractor in the tractor for lifting and lowering and mentoring the position of the uh, implement with respect to the tractor. So, we need to have uh, a separate system. We may call it limitation, but I would say that is not a limitation, it is a requirement which then if you um, say that additional implement, well one can say it is a limitation, not limitation, but adding to the cost. So, a high cost here. Well, at the same time you require a skilled labor uh, operator, sure we must have skilled operator or skilled people. It is essential that for all the equipment which are automated, equipment which are uh, sensor based, equipment which are um, micro uh, controller based or sensor which are ultrasonic uh, controller based or several other electronic devices which are being used in the equipment nowadays, you need to train your operator with respect to several uh, things. For example, with respect to operation, with respect to its uh, safety, with ref reference to its uh, um, limitations, all other things you must have and therefore, a skilled operator will give you a better uh, output of the system rather than uh, the operator uh, who is not uh, trained, even your total work output will come down the downtime time of the implement will be more if the person is not uh, uh, skilled. So, a skilled operator, a trained operator has to be there. It is not a limitation, I would say it is not a limitation, but then one can say that yes it requires because in a tractor even a person who can drive and then he can operate the uh, controls. Thank you.